Last week, the attention of the entire world, it seemed, was focused on a small submersible called the Titan and its five passengers. The Titan disappeared while descending through the Atlantic Ocean on its way to visit the wreck of the Titanic. For a few days, there was hope that somehow, miraculously, the Titan might be located and its passengers rescued, but that hope flickered when rescue efforts failed to locate the vessel before it would have exhausted its supply of oxygen and was finally extinguished on Thursday, when debris belonging to the Titan was discovered near the Titanic wreck site. The U.S. Coast Guard announced that the search was over and that most likely the Titan had imploded on Sunday when its mothership first lost contact. There are so many angles from which to approach this story. I could talk about how the Titan and its five passengers were the objects of a massive multinational rescue effort while thousands of refugees drown at sea every year, drawing the notice and concern of almost no one, relatively speaking. I could join some of my fellow progressives in gleefully celebrating the deaths of a few billionaires, but honestly, I don't want to do that. Not because my heart bleeds for the billionaires who died aboard the Titan, but because also aboard the Titan was the 19-year-old son of one of those billionaires. Also aboard was a world-renowned deep-sea explorer who was widely considered the foremost authority on the wreck of the Titanic. No matter how heartless and cynical I might be toward the ultra-wealthy, I feel no need to revel in the loss of the Titan or to make jokes about it. Other than the ones I've already made, like this one, which I tweeted on Thursday, where I suggest Willem Dafoe's character from The Lighthouse would be a good choice to deliver the eulogy at the memorial service. Also, if any of you have good jokes about the implosion of the Titan, feel free to share them in the comments. Humor can be healing. Anyway, instead of either of those, the angle I want to take toward this story is one that was suggested by this tweet, also posted on Thursday by Joey Manorino, who says, Wokeness killed the people on that submarine. Let that sink in. They died because the woke CEO said he wouldn't hire 50-year-old white men who knew how to command submarines and would rather train others. And the CEO died too. That's the next level of go woke, go broke. First of all, let that sink in. Very poor taste, Joey. We don't need to lower ourselves to such depths. It wrecks me how titanically insensitive some people can be. I made those jokes on Twitter last week, too. So, Joey Manorino is not the only shit-for-brains right-winger to charge wokeness with the destruction of the Titan. Charlie Kirk opened the tiny mouth on his mammoth peeled cantaloupe head to say pretty much the same thing, that the CEO of Oceangate, the company that built the Titan, said in the past that by design, his team did not include, quote, a bunch of 50-year-old white guys. Therefore, according to Charlie Kirk, he killed himself and his customers with wokeness. Now, here's the thing. Stockton Rush, the aforementioned CEO of Oceangate, did say that, but when you look at the quote in context, it seems obvious that appearing woke was not on Rush's mind. The quote comes from an interview Rush did with Teledyne Marine, and according to the New York Post, this is the relevant bit of what he said. There are other sub-operators out there, but they typically have uh, gentlemen who are ex-military submariners, and they... you'll see a whole bunch of 50-year-old white guys. I wanted our team to be younger, to be inspirational, and I'm not going to inspire a 16-year-old to go pursue marine technology, but a 25-year-old, um, you know, who's a sub-pilot or a platform operator or one of our techs can be inspirational. Seeing the 50-year-old white guy's quote in context probably isn't going to change the minds of anyone trying to blame wokeness for the Titan implosion. Most people who are part of this particular moral panic use the word woke the way tech companies and the entertainment industry use AI. They don't know what it means. They don't even know what they think it means. They just know it gets certain people excited, so they use it every chance they get. But I think most people who come at this with an honest, responsible approach will conclude that Stockton Rush wasn't trying to sound woke. He was trying to sound hip. Does that sound too cynical? 
After all, in that quote, he's talking about inspiring the younger generation to take an interest in the field he was pursuing. What's so bad about that? Why not give him the benefit of the doubt? I suppose I could, except for the fact that I'm pretty sure the implosion of the Titan and the deaths of all five people aboard, including Stockton Rush himself, are all Stockton Rush's fault. It wasn't wokeness that imploded that sub. It was the hubris and the greed of the guy who created it. The purpose of Ocean Gate, Stockton Rush's company, is not scientific research or anything else so noble. It's a deep sea tourism company. The Titan was not built to carry marine biologists or naval historians to the bottom of the ocean to expand the boundaries of human knowledge. It was built to carry paying customers who wanted to visit famous shipwrecks, and a seat cost $250,000. OceanGate's website claims that the Titan was designed and constructed in collaboration with NASA, Boeing, and the University of Washington. None of those claims appears to be true. All three organizations have issued statements clarifying that they played no part in the designing, building, or testing of the Titan. Additionally, the Titan was not certified as safe by any regulatory agency, operated in international waters where it was not required to meet any safety standards, and OceanGate required passengers to sign a waiver confirming that they were aware of the Titan status as an unregulated, unapproved, experimental craft. On top of all that, Stockton Rush made no secret of his contempt for safety regulations. In 2019, he told Smithsonian Magazine that the Passenger Vessel Safety Act of 1993, quote, needlessly prioritized passenger safety over commercial innovation. Imagine that! The Passenger Vessel Safety Act prioritizing passenger safety over commercial innovation. What's the world coming to? In a 2021 interview on the YouTube channel Alan Por El Mundo, Rush brags about the rules he broke in the design of the Titan, saying, the carbon fiber and titanium, there's a rule, you don't do that. Well, I did. Hey, you know why there's a rule? That you don't build submersibles designed to travel to the bottom of the ocean out of carbon fiber and titanium? Because they can't handle the pressure and they implode. Rush was warned about this repeatedly by people who knew what they were talking about. He had the Titan's hull made using carbon fiber anyway. Why? According to this 2017 article from Composites World about the construction of one of the Titan's predecessors, the Cyclops II, quote, OceanGate CEO Stockton Rush says the company had been evaluating the potential of using a carbon fiber composite hull since 2010, primarily because it permits creation of a pressure vessel that is naturally buoyant and therefore would enable OceanGate to forego the use and the significant expense of syntactic foam on its exterior because the use of carbon fiber composite would allow the company to forego the use and significant expense of syntactic foam on its exterior. He did it to save money. Just last year, Rush told CBS News, quote, at some point, safety just is pure waste. I mean, if you just want to be safe, don't get out of bed. Don't get in your car. Don't do anything. That same CBS News story by correspondent David Pogue also reports how, during a previous dive to visit the Titanic wreck, communications between the Titan and the mothership failed, and the Titan, piloted by Rush himself, got lost and was unable to find the Titanic at all. Additionally, it also features Rush showing off how many of the Titan's components are, as he puts it himself, off the shelf including the wireless gaming controller used to drive the goddamn thing, and Rush declaring confidently that operating the Titan, quote, shouldn't take a lot of skill. Wokeness. Right. It wasn't wokeness that killed those people. It was the reckless, overconfident jackass sitting with them in that sub with a fucking video game controller in his hand. He knew what the rules were, and he broke them to save a buck. He was warned what could happen, and he didn't listen. And now, like so many arrogant and acquisitive men before him, he's dead, and so are the people who foolishly place their lives in his hands. Let's review one more time. Just because someone is rich, that doesn't make them smart. 
Just because someone is self-assured, that doesn't mean they know what they're talking about. And if someone compares their submarine to an elevator, don't get on. Especially if they want to charge you a quarter of a million dollars for that elevator ride. There are cheaper ways of getting yourself killed.